All right, we'll call a meeting at uh, 501. Thank you all for attending. Um, we are one trustee short this evening, and uh, so I hold the duty of um, doing the meeting this evening. So, let us begin. I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of the special meeting of February 22nd, 2023. I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Any further discussion regarding that meeting? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. I will vote yes also. And now entertain a motion to adopt meeting minutes of March 6th, 2023. I so move. The motion. I will second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? I thought they were fine. Thank you. I agree. Um, can you vote please, Mr. Hosler? Yes. I will vote yes also. We have a motion and a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $48,961.78, comprised of general funds $770.14. Fire Fund, $34,200.47. Cemetery Fund, $3,470.58. Uh, EMS Billing, $4,968.90. Road and Bridge, $57,3169. Is there a motion? Uh, only that you read the EMS Billing as 4968. It is 4986. I apologize. Also a misread on the Fire Fund. What? $34,002.47. There we go. I'm out of practice. I'm out of practice, yeah. I move to okay. approve payment of the bills. You said I'm out. Do you second? I, I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Alster? Yes. I will vote yes also. Correspondence this period. We have a Family Violence Prevention, Prevention Center Spring Invite, Green County Annual Report to the Community on May 5th. MBRPC's news release about the approval of $49.7 million for our, um, our area and federal transportation funds. Um, and an invite to a watershed network information center session, excuse me, from the Ohio EPA. We also have the Ohio Township Association reminder for March education options and the March 17th legislative alert. We have a letter from a Hyde Road resident requesting to attend yesterday's BZA meeting. A uh, new project manager for Kingwood Solar um, uh, and, an, and a second application for the rehearing of the project to the uh, Ohio Power Siding Board. We have letters from the Comes Land Trust Director Burns and County Engineer uh, Goff. Versus, uh, regarding road rights, uh, right of way. Uh, Yellow Springs Chambers online portal and phone app, phone app, fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for March 20th. Any further correspondence in or out for the period? <coughs> Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Now we'll open the floor for public comments on agenda items. Hearing none, we'll move to the fire department report. All right, thank you very much. Since the last meeting of the board, um, things have been slow. 15 EMS incidents and three fire incidents. Uh, the prior period, well, I wasn't in one then. Prior two week period, we had 32 EMS incidents and 10 fire incidents. So more normal. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, per policy 11.1.1, I almost forgot to do this. Uh, I did give you my notice of intent to retire letter. Well, my address to Marilyn since she's the chair, but you all got it. So. Um, and it's looking as if, so my last day here at work will be Tuesday, August 1st, and my last actual day of employment will be Friday, August 11th. Which is the end of the paper. Um, and the person of police and fire said that just makes sense <laughs> to work out a paper. So, um, so there is that. Um, 
We've got two resolutions for y'all. Y'all want to read one? Sure thing. <laughs> so we have 2020, 2023-18. Uh, hold on, it's in here somewhere. <clears throat> so this is authorizing an hourly increase for MTFR employee. Uh, in a nutshell, um, Captain Ayers noticed something that I missed, which is that our policy states that when you become a fire or EMS instructor, you get a dollar an hour increase, um, which I completely spaced upon, but he found that and also reminded me that when we hired um, Chris Klein, uh, he received a dollar additional because he's a fire instructor. So, um, world of fairness. There's a um, resolution that's increasing his salary by a dollar an hour. And the only reason I'm doing it by resolution is in the past we just would have done it. Mm -hmm. um, following um, last year's edition of the annual audit from the state, um, the auditor, one of the auditors I spoke with um, stressed to me the importance of doing this type of thing through resolutions. And mm -hmm. there's a record of it. So it, it's resolution 2023-18, according to Margaret. Do you want me to read the whole thing or just? No. Nope. Okay, fine. <laughs> I move adoption of resolution 2023-18. Second that. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please, Mr. Hollister? Yes. I will vote yes also. The resolution has yeah. passed. And then I'll take effect with the next paper. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of one right now, I think. Can't keep this stuff mm -hmm. straight. And then we've got 20, we don't. 2319, uh, which is authorizing a base increase to our MTFR's BLS staff. So the BLS staff are the people who are not paramedics. Uh, so they're EMTs. Um, they're the ones, I mean, their start, the current start rate is 12.98 an hour for these guys. Most of them are making 13 something below what you could get to start a target um, or other attention employees. Um, as part of our levy campaign, uh, at least in both presentations I did, we talked about increasing their rate by two bucks an hour. Um, talking to HR people, the most sensible way to do it is to increase the base rate and then they get whatever increases they've had or just top, mm -hmm. put on top of that. Yeah. Um, so it's two dollars and one, uh, two dollars and two cents. But that was a conversation with Marilyn. She felt that that two cents was okay to do. So um, anyway, so this resolution then, uh, what do we call it? Modernizing the pay. Mm -hmm. I found that on. Uh, I think it was on a federal website. So sounded very uh, governmental. Um, and this is not retroactive. This will take effect within the next period as well. And then there's a. A attachment that shows who they are, um, <clears throat> what their current base is, what their individual add-ons over the years have been mm -hmm. for some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, most, of, most of them are colas, um, mm -hmm. but there's a few. Uh, Cassie Brewer, for, you know, he received a merit raise from the lieutenants two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also got a dollar an hour increase for becoming a fire inspector. So, um, so it's all listed there. Okay. And then new you know, if we ever, well, I'm sure at some point there'll be a new hire. <laughs> um, Maybe. They would, our base rate would then be 15 bucks. Away, so. All right, is there a motion to approve resolution 2319? <coughs> I shall move. We have a motion, and I'll second the motion. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote please, Mr. Hollister? Yes. I will vote yes. Also, the resolution has passed. Thank you. I could have put this in discussion with, sorry, uh, my understanding is that roughly covered, follows Sugar Creek Township's I base. Think, I think that's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, most of the places in our area that are around our size are in the range of 15, 16 bucks an hour to start for a base of EMT. Uh, I think you researched that somewhat when we first discussed this before. The yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Alex went and done a whole bunch of survey oh, for us. Right. Um, obviously, larger departments start at higher rates, but they also have yeah, more money. So. <laughs> but I think, I mean, 15 puts us in a good place. And if someone comes in with their fire inspector, they get a dollar an hour and a 
stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it makes us more competitive and also helps with retention. That's what you guys what we're looking for. Do a lot of the work here, so. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, also, there's a packet, I guess. Now, uh, the newly revised packet <laughs> um, in there, which is budget priorities for the next two years that uh, the assistant chief and I put together. Um, our idea was not, I don't know, I mean, unless you guys want to, there was no idea that was like a formal vote on this or anything. You know, we yeah. don't know if that's needed, just to give you guys an idea. So I tried to get it to you guys on Friday, at least so you had some time to, uh, if you were here on the week, yeah. look at them. Or if not, then you didn't get a chance. But <laughs> um, and we had, no, I don't have the modern one, but uh, the newest one includes a table at the end with uh, priorities. Oh, right here. I knew I had a copy with me somewhere. Um, with priorities and timelines and that. I mean, and again, these are loose. The prices are estimated, um, usually estimated on the high side, just mm -hmm. for budgeting purposes to make life a little easier. Um, and this doesn't include just the basic, you know, day-to-day. -day. Yeah. We had to put axes on here because, you know, it just seems silly. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Capital expenses. Yeah, I mean, some were more just for illustration purposes. You know, I mean, some of the things. Yeah. The MS training equipment under training, twenty five hundred bucks over two years. That's really not. Mm -hmm. But it's just to to give the board an idea mm -hmm. of the things that we're looking at. Uh, we also put in, you know, the continuing the EAP program. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's been any discussion of not continuing that, but um, it's an important thing, mm -hmm. at least on our side. Uh, we do get some use out of it. And then the peer support training is also in there just because it's free and it's going to be covered by a grant. So that would be nice to get some of the guys out uh, in that training program. So. And I marked off the last one because that was a given. Yeah, I just wanted to fill up paper. <laughs> now, in my brief correspondence with you asking for the priority, I just threw out the number of 50000 uh, mm -hmm. if we had that to spend. In 23, which I'm not 100% convinced what exact amount we have at the moment, but we will fine tune that as we go. Of the 23 projects that you have, what would you choose to get to 50,000? Well, uh, I should also say you'll notice that the capital stuff, the big capital, the trucks aren't on it in here just right. like this. I, no, I know. <laughs> not that <yet>. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, the, 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 I think the, the highest part of the ambulance is basically there. Yeah, okay. right. The ambulance is there. The fire engine, I mean, that's going to be a, a grant yeah. um, at some point in the SCBA um, once we get this stupid SAM thing taken care of. The biggest priority, I think, I mean, Danny and I were talking, the biggest priority is the firefighter training care. Okay. Just because of the liability exposure. Got it. Um, we're, Nick went through the gear for me and I think we've got at least 10 sets that are no longer standard mm -hmm. because the standard is only 10 years of a lifespan for turnout gear. Mm -hmm. um, makes a lot more sense if you're in New York City and your gear is seeing a lot more fire than ours is. Yeah. But it's a liability issue at this point. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys are in gear that that's old. Uh, including me, but I didn't count myself because yeah, I'm a child. Um, so I mean, that's the highest. Uh, we split it over the next two years to start phasing the gear in. Unfortunately, with supply chain things, it takes, traditionally it was 75 days to get a set of turnout gear. Uh, that's been extended out to five months. Is the 44,000 12 sets or six? That's for 12. That's the total cost mm -hmm. of, the, of the project. Okay. That is also, the cost. there's a cost increase coming um, mid-April. So this was an estimate a little bit on the high side, assuming that they weren't gonna that state contract pricing wasn't going to increase that much. Do we pay for six in 23 and six in 24 or the whole thing? The idea was to pay for six this year and six next year. All right, so it's not 44,000, it's 22. Right. We just put the whole cost there. So. I got you. Okay, so now you've got 22 and what's your remaining 27 going to be spent on? I would say, I mean, the, the biggest, um, and the other one would be the turnout gear storage. The 15 ish thousand that's down from the original estimate. Um, that's because 
that original, I mean, the construction estimate that we had for the turnout care storage was, I think, for 38 lockers. Mm -hmm. um, if we ever get to a point of needing 38, we can always add more because it's modular. Mm -hmm. um, this is for, I think, 28 sets of uh, lockers. Okay. Originally, wasn't the cost of gear storage included in the construction of the station? Yes and no. Um, as, as, as many things were included in the construction of the station, this was one that was pulled out to drop the right. initial price and put into the we're going to pay for it. The owner responsibility category. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, you got 13 grand left. Woo! <laughs> ah. Be careful. Yeah. The, uh, for this year, I mean, the radio batteries, I mean, it's 3200 bucks, but those are critical because the radios don't work without them. Mm -hmm. uh, the other big critical thing under communications is a digital upgrade, but we don't have to do that until next year. Mm -hmm. So that's 7500 can go to next year. Okay, at least you have 10 grand. And then uh, website redesign and probably the uh, mobile data platforms are the two most. And that comes in at 10. Perfect, doesn't it? Look at that. Yeah, you read those off again? Nope. Once you've, once you've messed it down, it's all up. Uh, the last two were the uh, website redesign, and that's probably high, that price, mm -hmm. based on the quote that she gave Marilyn. Uh, and then the mobile data platforms, which while not a high need, will increase efficiency big time. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if efficiency is the right term, but mm -hmm. they'll give us real-time information updates from dispatch. Basically, as the dispatcher is inputting notes, the guys will see it on the screen, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. Okay. And not having to do it um, the old way, you had to do it with a dedicated mobile data terminal that was 10,000 bucks a truck. Mm -hmm. and now you can just use an iPad mm -hmm. and link through some complex system of things that I don't understand. But thank goodness Denny does, and Rebecca does, so that he's working with them on the, the back end, as they say. I mean, there's other th the other things in there, you know, the Stairmaster, definitely, I mean, that was our first grant ever in 2001 we received that one. It's done yeoman service, I mean, it's still <laughs> Stairmastering along, but we could probably get a grant for someone to pay for that. Mm -hmm. um, ballistic protection, that's going to have to be a grant, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, and the mobile integrated healthcare stuff is... There's a lot of grants floating around on that. Uh, Lieutenant Pallet is working on that project. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it, I think it's, it says in here it's seed money for training, mm -hmm. as well as for um, depending on what the program looks like, mm -hmm. equipment for the room here, mm -hmm. like trying vital signs monitors and mm -hmm. stuff. Because the initial idea, I mean, mobile integrated healthcare you can have from small to full time Dayton Fire has a I think two full-time guys who just do community health. Mm -hmm. um, we would probably start a lot smaller than that. Um, the idea is uh, follow-ups for hospital admissions, um, which works well with a hospital because they want to keep those readmissions down. Mm -hmm. So, wait a minute. That ties into what budget item? That's under emergency medical services, mobile integrated healthcare. But it's also something that there's a bill slowly working its way through the state house that would allow, if passed, and according to our legislative person, it doesn't have a lot of opposition at this point, mm -hmm. would allow uh, Medicare and Medicaid to pay for these types of services. Mm -hmm. It's currently you can't bill because it's not a transport. Mm -hmm. uh, but this would allow fire departments to bill since this is becoming a big component of what a lot of fire departments do. Mm -hmm. so. So you get some money. I mean, not a fortune, you, but you mentioned this a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and I interpreted it as something that the hospital would be paying us to do. That is a potential because they lose money right. if a certain percentage come back within six months of their patient. Or uh, within thirty days. Or within thirty days. Yeah. If you're readmitted for the same problem with it, with some exceptions. Within 30 days of discharge, the hospital can lose the ability to bill for that. 
So it is, the potential is substantial for a hospital health system to, to lose money. Um, most of these programs are done in alliance with the healthcare system. For us, it would make most sense to ally with Kettering Health since the vast majority of our people are Kettering Health patients in this community. Uh, Dayton aligned with Premier. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, there's a big model program that's on one of the Columbus suburbs, um, one of the big townships. They work with Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And Mount Carmel actually provided training for the, the guy who's on a 40 hour shift and, and things that paramedics don't typically do. You know, long term so, so, yeah. so there's a lot of potential, but there's a lot of exploration that has to be done still. And a lot of this got derailed during the pandemic. Well, that sort of answers the question I was going to ask. Yeah. What are we doing to maximize this? Uh, yeah, they, they, our, the Regional EMS Council has a committee that works on this, and then Lieutenant Pallet has been working with, but they don't die off during the pandemic or many things. So it's reinvigorated. And, uh, so we're, we're working to determine what's the best model for us. And so you just said Danny is working on this? Uh, Lieutenant Pallet, Jason. Oh, Jason's working on it. That's his. This pet project. So there you go. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you have else sitting here today, I, as I said, I can't commit to the fifty thousand right. at this point. Um, plus, I would just assume not push this through, which you know would be nice, um, and let the chair review the. Mm -hmm. Projects, so. right? And as I said, this is just to give you guys an idea mm -hmm. of what we're looking at now that we have a little bit more money than we did in the last couple of years. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the the priorities pamphlet. Uh, it was, I thought, well, very well done as usual. Yes. Thank you. Dan and I worked hard on that one. So uh, last but not least. Um, Oh, there it is. Uh, I'll be out of the office Thursday and Friday of March 30th and 31st? Yeah. Or Thursday and Friday. And I'll uh, be in D.C. for training. So. Well, Arlington, Virginia, I guess. So. I was excited for this. Do you have a training? Is there a, a big program on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, because I, I have to go for a retirement interview, which I think is an interesting <laughs> like if I don't pass the interview, yeah, right. let me retire. <laughs> um, uh, this is for an uh, organization I volunteer with on the side. On the side so. <laughs> uh, uh, anything else for the chief? Not tonight. There is a third resolution listed. We're getting there. <laughs> um, I just wanted to bring up one thing that I may bring up more in the future, just because it was suggested at Township Convention by the same ex-former uh, fire chief, you know, uh, from the Ohio Fire. Oh, uh, was it Frank Cook? No, no, it was the other guy. Stan Cross? No, the other guy. <laughs> Uh, whoever. It doesn't matter. Someone. <laughs> Someone. But, uh, and we've chatted about this a million times, but he said the most effective way to get people from your community to, to uh, take a stake in your department and the work that it's done and maybe interested in becoming a career part of it, uh, as a, not necessarily as a volunteer, but potentially just to work your way up, is to start at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Maybe not elementary school, but high school. He said one of the most effective ways that they found to do that is to take people that you've got, and we've got a few people, and put them in school um, activities. Send them to a basketball game, send them to a football game. Send, and this is on, on on South, I mean, on their time, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah, yeah. The people who are at seven o'clock at night, I'll run them up to the high school now. Maybe you know, put a couple of turnout gear in the ambulance or in the fire department or in the fire engine, and, and in case something happens during the time, they can go up there and sit in the bleachers, and they have nice shiny things sit outside in the in the mm -hmm. parking lot. Oh, yeah. Everybody go, what the hell is that stuff doing? 
but you know, to a soccer game, to a football game, you know, and to to just you know establish that relationship. Um, and you know, a lot of your guys are so young they could probably fit into the you know, into the crowd. So you know, it's not like some you know big old grizzly burly guy with you know oh, yeah. huge mutton chops you know coming in there with his captain's hat and fire axe and stuff but <laughs> you know what I'm saying uh -huh. you yeah. know I think it's something that it, as we go along we could could, could consider you know? well certainly I mean we've we have had a very successful I mean, run mm -hmm. over the years with the uh, with our explore program uh, where we Jiggering it, for lack of a better term, I guess, uh, with Georgia as as the lead. Um, I know, but this is new enough that it's it's going to them, not coming to us. Right. Oh yeah. No, no. It's. Um, I mean, this is what's been identified as probably the way for us, us as the fire service, um, to help address some of the workforce short development shortages that we're yeah. we're facing, both volunteer and and paid. Um, you know, one of the things that's been talked about a lot now is not just the high school kids, it's getting in to middle school. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And getting that that there for them and also getting with parents so that they learn, parents understand that the fire service is a viable career. Um, you know, one of the things that we run into now is that kids, I've just had this conversation with some of the guys. For me, when I came in as a full-time guy, getting a pension, an insurance, and all those things was a big deal mm -hmm. for some of these guys. Now, I don't need a pension. I'm only 25. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you want it now because coming into the pension program at 45, you're not going to see any benefit, you know. Um, so one of the things we've talked about, and I know they've done a lot, like at my attention, in Claremont County, is getting into their career center mm -hmm. and meeting with parents mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. so that. You know, not everyone goes to college, right. and not everyone should go to college. <laughs> um, Most people do not. Exactly, and you know, there's a great job waiting for you that's got decent pay, guaranteed hours, mm -hmm. a set schedule, and a pension. <laughs> um, and it's where you live. I mean, in a lot of cases. In a lot of cases, certainly, yeah. So it's um, it's definitely something that Dan and I have discussed with Georgia and one other member who's going to kind of take over some of the community, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Community outreach, I guess, is okay. the best way to put it. Good. Um, Good. As we move forward, uh -huh. as the department moves forward. Mm -hmm. Great. A parallel approach, uh, I remember in high school, uh, I got a Red Cross first aid uh, certificate or whatever. I went through class that the fire department conducted at the Antioch Gym, which is now the Wellness Center. Um, that would might be one form that our outreach could take, is offering, uh, are we still able to, to do oh, yeah. uh, Red, yeah. Red Cross American Heart Association is what we do. Oh, American Heart Association. Yeah, um, yeah we could do that. Uh, the, and we've, we've done that for years in the high school. Mm -hmm. um, how recently? It's been a while because it became a funding issue on their, on their end. Mm -hmm. um, because in order for students to be certified, there's a cost involved. And we used to do it in health, in ninth grade health class for years. Um, but that teacher retired or moved on to a different district. Um, and they had had it set that the Yellow Springs Schools Foundation, or Something. I mean, yeah, there was something. They were helping to underwrite that cost uh, for, for students. But there are things, and I'll have to talk to Danny about this because he's a, much more familiar with it, but I know that there was a law that went through that requires students to get CPR trained, but it doesn't have to be certified. If it's not certified, that's easy. We can go in and do that. Um, Jason loves to teach classes. Um, the certification became, becomes an issue because there has to be a book involved and all that has mm -hmm. cost to it. Um, it's not a lot. I mean, we charge the minimum that we can charge, which is 45 bucks, but a student. Well, that Yellow Springs Education Fund still exists through the Community right. Foundation. So, I mean, it used to be a really good program. 
uh, for us. So is this something that Georgia or the other person could? If the school district's interested, we could definitely look at it and see. Uh, currently, we do well, we only do CPR training for staff, but uh, in limited numbers of staff. Well, I was thinking of other first aid stuff, you know, like how to do a bandage or how to do a... Yeah, there's a class that we teach that's uh, heart saver or first aid. Mm -hmm. Teach us for... That's it. <laughs> Okay, um, my next item was, I had asked you if you had been interested to bring a proposal about incorporating, uh, the potential of incorporating the Ohio police and fire pension program mm -hmm. to yes. the, uh, Yeah, and we hope to have that for your next meeting. Um, okay. We were waiting on a piece of information that I just received today, so, uh, to help, uh, basically it's a calculator. Mm -hmm. Figures out how much this is going to cost us. I, I bring this up because this was a, another suggestion at the conference that a, a way to strengthen retainment of, of staff that doesn't have it is to allow them into the um, Ohio Police and Fire Pension Program. You have to work 37 hours a week in order to qualify for that. We have traditionally kept our schedules at 36 hours a week in order not to have to go into that program. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin agrees that would probably be a good idea to, to help for retention of uh, staff members. And the cost is not that terrible. But yeah, the original numbers we ran were not horrifically higher than what we paid, what we estimated to pay this year for that pension. Mm -hmm. And currently, I mean, we have what, five, five people in the pension program, um, and then another eight or so who are doing 36 hour a week regularly scheduled. Um, and they get, I mean, they get sick time, vacation time, and, and health benefits like the rest of us. The downside is they don't get any, they can't be in PERS uh, because they're firefighters. Uh, they don't get anything. I mean, you know, there's no long term. And for some of the younger guys, again, that's not a concern, but for some of the older ones. Of the eight, how many do you think might be interested? Probably five to six. Yeah. If not more. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it definitely, I mean, I have never been a fan of how we staff, again, we, the Global Fire Service. You know, there's so many fire departments that are part time. And you get these guys who are working four or five different fire departments. It's tough on them. It's tough on you know us, for instance. We've got guys who work here, Harrison Township and Springfield Township, mm -hmm. uh, and they got to do what they got to do, obviously, to make ends meet. But the problem is, sometimes it can be a problem for guys when they're like, "Wait, which department am I at today?" Because everyone does things differently. And, mm -hmm. You know, having them legitimately full time and in the pension helps people in one place and, and all that kind of thing. So, um, so there's a calculator we just got today, an electronic calculator, uh, online calculator that'll help us figure out all the costs mm -hmm. uh, uh, without having to try and do it long and <laughs> screw it up. So <laughs> hearing a general idea, would you be in favor of hearing a presentation on what it would yes. mean for us? Okay. So um, Another traditional problem that places have with that idea is that the more guys in the pension system, typically places will unionize. Mm -hmm. um, law in Ohio allows people to unionize, but the, because we're such a small township in population, the law doesn't, doesn't uh, you don't have to recognize the bargaining unit, which in the long run is the point. Was it under 5,000? It's that under 5,000, oh. and it's only in the unincorporated areas what's looked at not. Oh, wow. So we're got ways, ways to go. To go. Yeah. Um, which, you know, hits my liberal side as like <laughs> good and bad, yeah. but, you know, they can, they can organize, um, but then you don't have to bargain with them, which really takes away, mm -hmm. like, what's the whole point? Mm -hmm. I even spoke to one of the, a union guy who was like, why would you pay union dues if you're not getting it? the benefit of the union, which is the bargaining unit. So, right. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. So, 
I will. We'll have that for your next meeting. Or for our next, for the next meeting. Great. Something to look forward to. <laughs> I'm sure you're much more well versed in it than I, but there's a, um, a governor's proposal for legislation or for executive order or something about emergency responders. And did it have something in there about providing Mark's equipment to everybody? Or my understanding, and there could be, there could be something else, but my understanding is. Um, so the governor has proposed in his budget to eliminate the Mark's user fees, um, which were set to increase this year. Um, so you pay a set amount for every radio that's on the system. Mm -hmm. And it's long been seen as an obstacle to getting more people onto the state system. Maybe that's what it is. And I think that's the big thing, is mm -hmm. for, especially for smaller departments, either volunteer or small career departments. Those, um, we were lucky here in Greene County because initially the commissioners, mm -hmm. you know, under, not undercut, but underwrote under that. Yeah. So we were only paying 10 bucks, mm -hmm. think 10 bucks a year for the radio. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that the fee is a lot more than that. And, uh, the governor's proposing to eliminate it. Mm -hmm. It's paid for somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, one would hope that that will mm -hmm. go through. So. Do you know offhand uh, how many more years, if any, we have? Paying these things off. I thought we were done, but we're. I know we're not. I think we may have two more payments to yeah. the LGAI. What are you talking about? When we switched to the state's Mark's radio system, the mm -hmm. system that we're that Green County's on now, um, we looked at jumping on on a weird kind of a hybrid, cost-effective way that would maintain. Two different radio systems, which would have been a nightmare. I think I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but Beaver Creek Township Fire was able to apply for what was in existence at the time a local government innovation fund grant on behalf of ourselves. So we're right. paying, so we're, uh, the question then is how so many more years is that growing? That okay. loan, and I think we only have two or three more payments. It's quarterly. Mm -hmm. um, but Margaret would have that info. <laughs> okay. Well, our agenda shows another resolution. Yep, we're getting there. <laughs> I have one more item that I wanted to bring up, which isn't a hundred percent for you. Okay. But it may be. Um, I don't know if, if if everybody knows that our insurance premiums for this year with Anthem were increased 27 percent. And noticed, and no, no, that's, made aware of that. that's no small potatoes. I would like us to consider putting a moratorium on cost of living raises, as opposed to asking our personnel to contribute towards their insurance, which is a possibility until either things get settled or the CPI goes down. But with the moratorium, is this retroactive? No, no we just no, made. It retroactive. <laughs> no. We just made. No, it would be starting next year. Something to think about. Yeah, so it's, it's not like we need to take have a resolution no. saying. But I just, I'm putting a mm -hmm. in your ear, that's all. Do you um, know if that increase, Marilyn told Danny and I about it, um, was that throughout our whole group? Yes. Okay, so it wasn't just based on our experience, you know. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Or is it I just you my, our like, group? Our group. Oh, yeah. Uh, I believe a good portion of it is based on our experience over the past couple years. Couple years. Okay, that's what I thought. And whether that's adjusted or not, I, I didn't know that was the case. I, I knew the... Um, What's the operation in Cincinnati that we claim links? Claim links. That's a lot of that is dependent on our usage and yeah, you know, their administrative fee and stuff. But I don't know where that's going either for, for next year. But anyway, just a bit, yeah, just a thought. Uh, since you know, since the fire medical budget line item 
is just shy of a hundred thousand dollars. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> Talk about the old days. Um, anyway, I'm going to go down that road. Uh, we do have a resolution uh, before us. This is uh, Miami Township Resolution 2320, and I am going to read it because I think it's important. But this is a resolution to contract with the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association for an organizational assessment of Miami Township Fire and Rescue Department. It reads, whereas Miami Township Board of Trustees is authorized by Section 50537 of the Revised Code to establish and maintain fire protection services for Miami Township Green County, and whereas the impending retirement of our fire chief, that would be this one, uh, in August of 23, after a tenure of 26 years, I think that's short, presents an opportune time to review the efficacy of our fire protection and EMS services, and whereas we are in need of professional consultation to review and advise all administrative and operational facets and to ensure compliance with local, state, federal law, as well as industry best practice in order to improve our delivery of fire protection and EMS services. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees in Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, we hereby enter into contract with the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association to conduct an organizational assessment of the Miami Township Fire and Rescue to include strategic and master planning, examination of current service delivery, response performance, service demands, service support, analysis of existing policies, procedures, and administrative practices, and staffing needs. Compensation for the above described organizational assessment to be conducted in 2023 would be $24,953, not to be exceeded without further action by this board. Uh, is there a motion to adopt resolution 2320? I so move. There's a motion. I will second that. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? And then may we vote, please, Mr. Hollister? Yes. I will vote yes also. Well, I should have said in discussion, I think this, this is a big move. It is. Uh, reviewing our uh, current state of affairs. How are we doing? What could we be doing? It will be thorough. And my understanding is that you recommended, or you didn't say, you suggested one option being. Yes. yes. Okay, anything else required? Hearing none, may we move to cemetery slash road? Good evening. Since the last meeting, we've had one burial in Clifton, the full burial. And we've been working in the Oak Grove area, ready to put down some seed. We need to have that wrapped up. How are we doing on tree sales so far? Do you know? And I've sold four. And then you've sold a couple. Mm -hmm. So about six. Mm -hmm. I had a man that's requested. He wants. He wants a couple of the other graves. Um, we're not selling them yet. Is that correct? Pretty close. I told my calling. You know, if you find out, let me know so I can call yeah. them. I, the only thing I was concerned about is, like, on the seated area, somebody wanted a plot right there, and it was a, it was an at need sort of thing. Right. Know, well, well his the two he's picked out are four or two and four or three. They're right up kind of by the entrance. Oh, is that right? What's uh, I, would, I would say go for it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a good deal. And uh, hopefully we can work on that water line Wednesday. I, I, I need water to line on Wednesday. That's the cemetery. Fix it so we can fire up the, the Frostbridge pickets. As long as we've got you here and we're talking about selling the, the, uh, the tree graves, I want to make sure that we're on the same page. You have described to everybody that they're for single, the, the ten single by ten, body. One, one, one body, and the requirements for the, the body and, and the year wait for the tree and all yeah. the rest of that good stuff. Has anybody mentioned or have you said, you know, we are kind of, kind of holding off on selling the most adjacent single grave right next to it in case you are family or uh, husband and wife or something and wanted another one close by. Right. Well, that's why I tell them. Like, they want to buy a space, a tree space, and there are adjacent graves that they'll be able to purchase, but not just yet, you know, so that 
If they want, I might, I, 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 mm -hmm. I'd hold it for them. You know, if they mention that there's an interest. Right. Okay, then I'll know that if you're Mark, you know, don't sell that one. Mm -hmm. you know, and then they'll get back with me usually and say, yeah, can we buy it yet? And I'll say yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. All right, pretty, just wanted to pretty, try to be as thorough as I can with them yeah. as explanatory as possible. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big commitment, you know, and it's a big commitment to us, too, to be able to provide it. Okay, what else happened? Well, that's my reason to sit here. And then we're going to try to fix that more along. Yeah. Okay. I've been uh, asked by a township resident to consider asking Roger not to put Roundup on stones anymore, at least now, to use perhaps an inhibitor um, for a couple reasons. I mean, the environmental is number one, and two, as everyone knows, you put three inches of Roundup on the base, yeah, it and, grows. and it grows. six months later, it grows. it's now 12 inches wide. Uh, and I looked at things last fall, and I, I was not that, that pleased with how things looked. Um, and I realize it puts us between a rock and a hard space because now we have uh, we have grass growing around stones that we don't want. Um, but perhaps an inhibitor would slow it down. Or I what, I'll call, call him, talk yeah. to him. I haven't talked to him yet. About calling. I know we've used that at, at Clifton in the past. I don't know what he uses in Clifton. I didn't monitor it that closely to see whether it was effective or not. You've been out there, obviously. I don't well, know if you and Dan are I not. Look, I didn't look. He, it, when he sprays, it it works. It doesn't last yeah. that long. Yeah. But it does knock it out for a month or so, but it doesn't last that long. Yeah. But it, he never sprays everything. He, mm -hmm. he does this area and this area. I'll be back. Well, see, we'll see what else is available. What else yeah. will work? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You say that's all you've got for cemeteries? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll go to roads. I did uh, a road inspection the other day, and I found the roads to be about the way I hope the roads look for the rest of the year. Very good. Very good. Uh, I saw nothing that seemed to need attention. If you want the roads to look like this for the rest of the year, we just voted on improvements. True. I, I guess I was... I know. Um, facetiously speaking about the grass being nice and short and the, okay, the sides all trimmed back. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the surface. And the surface is good. I mean, he, he's... Been and very spending another hundred thousand dollars on it. Well, he's, this has been an easy, a bit of an easy winter. Uh, we yes. haven't had, we haven't had a hard, no hard freeze and thaw. Yeah, that with, really creates potholes. Uh, We've yeah. had some potholes. You know, but we stay try to stay on top of them. Yeah, well, I mean, if you recall the last couple of years, Houston Road was really chewed up with potholes. We couldn't hardly stay ahead of that. I don't know, Larkins or whatever it was, but um, this year. I, it looked really nice the other day. I'd like to see that. Well, Every time I go out, we'll keep it a good word. <laughs> um, I'm going to I'm going to jump back to cemeteries just cemeteries for just a second because I did notice on my tour that uh, you and your staff took it upon yourself to uh, I think do all the uh, grave seating and and strong and leveling up. All, all the all the recent ones. There are some that were last year, you know, that mm -hmm. need to be a little bit, but we hit everything that's really looking bad. Well, I, I'm, I'm happy about that because, you know, in, the, in years past we have gotten way too close to Memorial Day and it hadn't, it hadn't been uh, addressed. But well, there should be something there. We wanted to prevent that this year. Yeah, well good. I, I'm sure we will now that you've got that down. <laughs> Thank you, um, and thank you for doing it without being counted to income. Um, uh, Dan has also started, um, or maybe midway through, I'm not sure how far, uh, he does have the uh, garage in Quonset Hut organized better, as we asked him to at the first of the year, and uh, 
cleaned up. Uh, equipment's in nice looking shape. Uh, he has ordered supplies to, to hopefully uh, hold him through. I don't know if he's got, if he's got enough hydraulic oils and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, for now, I've yeah. warm and I probably just had the um, I, I didn't see a big box of wiper blades. Did, did you no, I didn't get any wiper blades. Yeah. Well, you know, well, this didn't think about. Yeah. Really didn't think about. Mm -hmm. I will. Because I'm, I'm have to call about a battery anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, sure. There's small things that yeah. slip through the slip through the cracks. Um, we do have a a, uh, a quote for a replacement for a bush hog that is seen better days. Uh, the one that we have. How many years old? 32, than, somewhere around 32 years old. It's older than, well, not most of us here. So, well, it's so it's good. Good. <laughs> the oh, quote is for a new, a new, yes. brand spanking. Not a no, no, brand new. nice, but used. New, brand, brand, brand new. new. Okay, how much? Uh, this 30, would be 3840, I think. 3830 and 22 cents. 38,000. 3800. Three. And 22 cents. Great, that was a very dry itself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be available for this year's mowing. It doesn't have to come from East Kimbuck oh, no. 2 or anything. So Pick it up as soon as I go. It's, it's okay. What can you do with the old one other than have it sit there forever? I don't know. I, I, mean, I could ask that uh, Jared at the county if we could put that on with the truck maybe. Have they put the truck on? Not yet. That's to send him some pictures, but I could take a couple pictures of it. See if there's anything they could do with that. For a buck. It still it still works. I, mean, I rebuilt the box once and the, yeah. the, the whole thing once. Mm -hmm. so. See that's the problem after a while you get more than thirty eight twenties worth of time labor yeah. sitting there trying to rebuild it. And, Mm -hmm. Finding parts availability is getting yeah. slim. I mean, it's getting harder and harder to find parts that are available, but just take longer to get them. And farther we get, take more. So I entertain a motion to authorize the uh, road department to acquire said bush hog. Um, uh, attached quote. I so move. We have a motion. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Hollister. Yes. I will vote yes. Also, thank you. So, thank you. On you go. Can I have that full dollar amount again, please? Full amount, yes. 38, 20, 22. There's one there. 22. Thank you. Something like that. Okay. Uh, anything else, David? Um, Xenia Township is burning the next couple of days, and we want to do a little. One in Brian Parker needs to look. There's a couple areas, and while they're rigged up, mm -hmm. I said possibly Thursday, Friday, maybe. Okay. Hit that. And there was another spot I don't know. Was it North River or Tobias? I can't remember. But when you say burning gravel on the end of the road, make so burn. adding gravel. Right, on. where they paved, there's a couple mm -hmm. of spots are dropped. And probably a truckload of them. So. Hopefully this week. You know, they're doing their burning, and I thought, mm -hmm. okay. He asked me if we can do that to be fine. If, if nobody knows, it's hard to believe that there is no state regulation that, that road resurfacing needs to be burned. Also, I mean, well, four look, inches of asphalt on there and just look at three forty-three. You have the drop off. We'll leave it. Right. Yeah. They only do it because of safety issue. It is yeah. a safety issue. That's why we all do it. Mm -hmm. Preventing. Yeah. Sure. Especially on curves. Mm -hmm. I think that's about all I have. That's about all you got, you think? I still want to try to crack the on my road. Yeah. That would be next week. There's no way to be good this week. Yeah. It's still where I was. else for the cemetery down? No. All right, let's move along to the fiscal officer's report. Well, we have no fiscal officer, so there's no report. 
However, we do have a uh, permanent appropriations resolution, which was, which is uh, resolution 2321, establishing permanent, res permanent <laughs> appropriations for the remainder of this year. Is there a motion for adoption? 2321. I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Well, this is pretty fundamental to our operations. Uh, True that. It's due to be done by April 1st deadline, so we're within that time frame. And I mean, I'm, I'm not challenging anything. I just think we should emphasize how, you know, this is sort of like the annual constitution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. May we vote, please, Mr. Hollister? Yes. I will vote yes also. Thank you very much. Resolution is passed. Um, zoning inspector report. Uh, did anyone hear the BCA results from yesterday? Just now? I have not. <laughs> now you say yesterday. Or not Sun they didn't meet on Sunday. I thought it was the 20th. I guess not. Today's the 20th. Oh, I thought, I'm sorry, I thought it was the 19th. Apparently not. I guess it was the 19th. Maybe they did meet on Sunday, but that seems odd. Maybe they're meeting this week sometime. Who will find out? Um, and they only had one topic? Yes. And that was the guardhouse uh -huh. on East Eden Road? Yeah. Or on Hyde Road? The meeting Road. was on the 16th. Meeting on the 16th. 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 Oh, Okay, so we're behind the time. Standing committee report, NBRPC. Uh, Chair Moyer is not with us this evening. Uh, Regional Planning Coordinating, Coordinating Commission did meet last, uh, last month. Uh, the meeting was solely committed to uh, township, different townships, local solar zoning regulations, And there were two on the agenda, and both which had been tweaked a few times by uh, the commission members, the prosecuting attorney, and their local zoning board. Uh, both were at that at the point of uh, adoption, or not adoption, but recommendation. So we did recommend continuing uh, having their zoning commissions continue on with their work. Uh, Cliff Newton Cemetery. We have not met. Are uh, we about to meet? About Should time we? to meet? Uh, yeah, before planting, planting season. I think she's not was supposed to say we're meeting for this month. Mm, okay. I thought she would. I'll check with Margaret. Uh, Community Development Corporation. Development Corporation. Uh, we met, nothing dramatic, but uh, we're on the first month of our of interim executive director uh, who will start the search for uh, a hired executive director and parallel to that is uh, uh, to say strategic plan is too ambitious a description but uh, we're, co we're cooperating or collaborating with the county development uh, department in uh, how to describe and promote Yellow Springs as a possible place to move your company. Mm -hmm. So fairly traditional economic development goals. Question, did I understand, I don't think it was from the local media, that you were potentially or have agreed to work with the village on the future use of the old Board of Trustees building? Uh, it could be interpreted that way. It, it was only that that was
as one option, but the village is not pursuing it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I... There are rumors that they've got somebody. Yeah. Because I wouldn't think, I don't know, but you guys would want to get into the rental type business. I mean, it'd be more... I was not aware that that specifically was... I mean, we toured it I would, while I was sick, so I didn't go. Yeah. Uh, but there's no intention of the village selling it, to my knowledge. No, no. the village was not going to sell it. it would, yeah. The village would be... That's what confused me. Uh, assumedly leasing, but they mm -hmm. wouldn't have to. Uh, to People would be using it for some economic purpose as their mm -hmm. desire. Okay. Anything else on that no. subject? Okay. Uh, the following two are also chair related, so we will get that at a further time. Uh, item 11 is new business. Any new business before the board? I have one item of new business. Um, I don't know whether this was hanging around the, the table for a while, and I've, I've mentioned it briefly, but uh, at the convention, uh, this is convention night, uh, actually this was, a, this was a presentation given and it was highly recommended that boards of trustees adopt a board policy for their meetings, uh, similar to type of policies that a BZA planning commission would have, uh, times that people speak, uh, times that you can get them not to speak, uh, various and sundry other procedures that uh, should be in place should the need arise. Was, uh, I was quite convinced that that would be a, a, a good insurance policy for us, and I would like to pursue that. Uh, to clarify, just <coughs> skimming these, uh, these PowerPoint mm -hmm. uh, slides, what you're I mean, sort of speaking to the camera, what you're talking about is uh, unusual, or most of the considerations would be unusual circumstances, things that come up that we should be prepared to, you know, if there, like if there's too big a crowd right. for the meeting, what do we do? Uh, and, and then some of it is just restating state law of, about open meetings and a no, proper notice. Uh, is it enough to just put it on our website, or do we put? Uh, is, I don't think we have a list of people who have requested notice of special meetings, but some organizations have that. You know. the, the Yellow Springs News has in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to do that on a yearly basis. You have to request well, then that was the, that's the kind of thing that we would put in on. Uh, policy, just as we have, uh, you know, public records policy. Yeah. Well, one of the examples that they gave, it, which would hardly come up, but certainly could come up, was a member of the public comes. Uh, we have a open meeting for some discussion, like solar projects or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, we say, you know, we've established a three-minute speaking mm -hmm. regulation uh, time limit. Uh, somebody gets up there and they like to make a dissertation on the meeting. Three minutes come up. You say, I'm sorry, the three minutes is up, um, so you need to take your seat. And they say, you know, where's it written in its three minutes? I I've got things to say. And they continue to talk. Uh, you know, there's no policy that says the board can set a time. Mm -hmm. Just because you set a time doesn't mean in theory, they can sue us for, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, constitutional uh, First Amendment. You're vi violating their freedom of speech. Right. Those are the you know, those are little things, but it is insurance, and, and I think it would be good to have. When I was on village council once, there was a time when I... I interrupted the chair and I said, I don't think, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to put up with it. This person was, was ranting. Mm -hmm. That would be in there. Mm -hmm. There would be a provision in there. And a policeman arrived 
within, apparently the dispatcher was bored and was watching the council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now that's great. <laughs> we need one of those. We have a little guardhouse out Oh no, wait a minute. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to move that we establish a uh, board policy. That is, we, de we develop, we write. I don't know that we need to move and just say, let's, let's get going on this. Okay, well, we, we would need to have it done by our, uh, by our council. Mm -hmm. And they're very um, well trained to do that for us. And so I would move to a contract with them okay. for that I purpose. See. I'll second that. Okay. Motion second. Any further discussion regarding that? Well, let's repeat. The motion is establish a, a board of trustees policy procedure. It's not a manual, but for conduct, conducting public meetings. Yeah. Okay. I, I did second that. Okay. Uh, let's vote, please, Mr. Hollister. Yes. And I will vote yes also. Thank you. Uh, any other new business? Any old business? Um, the long-awaited uh, pet burial report? Legal? Uh, did I really ever say I was going to do that? I, I believe it is reflected in the minutes. I don't believe it. <laughs> Apparently that ends the old business. Is there any further old business this evening? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Before we turn off the camera, yes, sir. I have advanced dementia. I will now. Everyone, including Bruce Willis's, or yeah, yes, Bruce Willis's Willis family, family, says, "Welcome to the club." Yeah. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I so move. Uh, there is a motion and we will adjourn by acclamation. Thank you all for coming.